your host, Pesa Shayo. And this is the place where we believe that every single marriage out there has the chance to be awesome and fulfilling. Yes, every marriage has a chance to be awesome and fulfilling. And by the way, for those who don't know us, um, I'm Pesa who, and I'm married to Whitney and we run LiveYourBestMarriage.com where we write blog posts and just believing that we can be helpful mm-hmm. and just promote marriage. Yes, we like to give encouragement to all the couples out there because we also need the encouragement just as much ourselves. We've been together for 13 years and we have four children. Yes. So today what I wanted to talk about is communication. And I wanted to discuss three reasons why communication is not your problem. What? Communication is... (laughs) We've been always been told that communication, communication, communication is what we need to work on. Um, Pretty much everybody talks about like if you are having issues in your marriage, uh, there has to be something to do with communication. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think the biggest issue is everybody, when everyone says communication is a must, they just leave it at that. They don't go further into it and explain that it's way more than just an exchange of words. What is it? It's, <laughs> it ha- you actually have to hear your spouse. You actually have to listen to what they're saying. And, all, and the three reasons why communication is not the problem. Number one, if I don't agree with the reason why my spouse is upset... Number two, if I don't understand why my spouse is upset. And number three, if I'm not doing anything wrong, then why should I have to listen to the complaints from the person I'm married to? Slow down, slow down. Actually, So we'll cover all three of those. Okay, what were those things again? So we'll start with number one. If I don't agree with the reason why my spouse is complaining. Basically, what happens... When we get upset and our feelings are hurt, most of us, I hope, go ahead and let the person we're married to know, hey, that upsets me. That bothers me. Um, Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. Because you might want to tell the other person that what they did upset you, but at that moment, they're actually not even in a a mood to hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Right. So in that case, it's not a communication problem. It's a listening problem. Uh, I thought this is just semantics. Communication and listening, isn't that same, the same thing? Nope. It has to go beyond just exchanging dialogue. When you complain and if, if the other, yes, you're saying it, but if the other person is just ignoring it or blowing it off, that that's not effective communication. That's just someone talking and the other one is just acting like it's not an issue at all. So this first thing that I that we need to break down is if I don't agree with the reason my spouse is upset. So sometimes what'll happen is when one if a let, I'll just say the wife, okay. for example, because I'm because I am a wife. <laughs> Something might upset me. Yes. And then when I talk about it, my husband might react like, okay, how is that a problem? But the thing is, he is supposed to react with compassion and understanding. Even if he doesn't really agree with it, he might might be thinking, okay, seriously? She's mad about that? But what's her problem? But the deal is, even if he doesn't agree with me, he needs to go ahead and say, okay, you know what? I, I totally get what you're saying, and I think we can work this out. So even if I don't agree with you, I should just agree with you, right? No, no. You don't have to agree. You can say, okay, you know what? I really don't think that's an issue. Okay. I don't, or I can say, you know what? I really just don't think that's a problem, or I don't feel like I did anything wrong. Yes. But because you're so upset... I'm going to go ahead and just take that into account and we can make a compromise. We can talk about this and we can figure out a way to get this issue resolved. But unfortunately, 
we we do have some friends who they if they don't agree with the reason their their spouse is upset they don't think there's a problem at all and one example i can give you is there was a couple having trouble with pornography mm-hmm. within their marriage one was watching it the other one thought it was a huge 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 betrayal actually more okay. than just a problem a huge betrayal okay so the the husband was the one doing the watching and the wife was the one doing the complaining okay but the husband was like, what's the issue? I have not cheated. Why is she complaining? Why is she so mad about this? Okay. But the wife was like, uh, no, excuse me. That just makes me feel like crap for obvious reasons. But the husband was still refusing to even acknowledge this issue. So the point I'm trying to make is even though he did not agree with her reason for being upset... As her husband, it was still his obligation to at least say, okay, you know what, honey? This obviously bothers you, and we need to figure out a way to get this resolved. Yes. And, I mean, the pornography thing just to me sounds so much of a no-brainer that, hey, I don't see... Mm -hmm. I don't know how to put it, but with the pornography, I just see it like she had a point. But I think most of the um, the fights and um, a lot of problems people have is when we... It's not just on the... I think the problem will come when um, we have issues which are like in the gray area. Right. Because pornography is like way out there that mm-hmm. it's like, duh, duh, just mm-hmm. why are you doing that? Right. But what about something that can you give an example where something is so much on the gray area where mm-hmm. one spouse can feel this way the other mm-hmm. spouse can feel the mm-hmm. other way mm-hmm. and it's okay well first of all to you yes the pornography issue is just black and white you're like okay it's either right or it's wrong you either mm-hmm. just you should just not do it yes but uh, apparently to this husband it, that was in the gray area it was okay. questionable so okay that, that's like in the movie um Fireproof, right? Fireproof. Oh, oh yes. In the movie Fireproof, the husband yes. was also dealing with... Was it Fireproof? Yeah, yeah. Caleb, yes. the firefighter, had a problem. He would, he was watching it on the computer. By the way, that movie is awesome. We've watched it several times and we just will recommend it to every couple. Any mm-hmm. couple. You don't have to be going through any issues. Mm-hmm. Fireproof. And what's the, the other one that they were praying well, the one that we we re- that really affected us was War Room. War Room, wow, yeah. that movie was crazy. We loved it so much. Yeah. Uh, do we have it? We don't have it. We rented okay. it on YouTube. But okay. anyway, going Anyways. back to answering your question, <laughs> your question was, okay, well, what about the issues that are in the gray area where one spouse is is like, um, yeah, that's a problem, and the other one is like, uh, no, not really. Well, an example I have for you is. When my husband and I were younger, a couple moved in next door to us. And the husband had a lot of female friends. I became a good friend of the wife. And so she would tell me these things. She would say, you know, I just think it's so ridiculous that, you know, he he goes out with these friends, but I'm not invited. And she stayed at home to take care of the baby. But the husband totally did not understand how this could be a problem. And so basically, him not understanding it, he just totally ignored it. He's like, okay, I really don't have to listen to her complaining about this. It's okay for me to have friends. I'm not cheating. I'm not doing anything wrong. And she's just jealous for no reason. She's just being immature. Okay. But again, we go back to the same point that I was trying to make earlier just because he did not understand why that would bother her it is still his responsibility to to either try to figure out why she's having an issue with that or come to some sort of compromise it's I mean in marriage it is absolutely vital for couples to be able to meet in the middle on some of these things so so I, I see your point. Uh, he should not like, and I looked at it from this other point where 
uh, it seems like he's putting uh, the concerns of his friends mm -hmm. before the mm -hmm. concerns of his wife. Right. And so the way I viewed that situation, yes, I viewed it so much more than, oh, well, you know, maybe she should just tag along and make sure, you know, nothing is going on and she can feel included. But I viewed it as so much more than that because I thought, okay, you know what? This guy is actually on a path. Okay. He is actually... What do you mean a path? He is, I guess, figuratively speaking, mm -hmm. in life, he is literally taking a road that may not be the best choice for his marriage okay in the long run okay you know i mean these friends could be influencing him in a negative way um i mean it 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 just it always i don't know it always sounded creepy to me that a group of ladies would even want to hang out with some married guy when the wife mm -hmm. is not there i mean and that and that's just me yes you know so what kind of <laughs> i mean but it brings the question yes. you know what kind of character do these friends actually have it just that's that's definitely something to take into consideration. So what if somebody says, you know what, uh, it's just friends, like what like mm -hmm. what we would have said, like mm -hmm. hey, they're just friends, and he's he's more open minded. Mm -hmm. He doesn't think in terms of or the genders. He's just thinking in terms of the person. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is just a friend. Right. I'm not thinking in terms of the genders. What did you tell them? Right. Yes. So so the way I I like to to break this down is. He was not hearing her concerns. Okay. He he just thought she was being unreasonable and he dismissed it altogether. Okay. So on the surface, it just sounded like she was annoyed. But you know what? Deep down, she was afraid that she would lose him to one of those female friends. Oh. And so he is supposed to have noticed that and just not go. Mm -hmm. Right. If he actually put some thought into this and yes. listened to her, I, he, he would have gotten that. Okay. And because, and, and, and I, I mean, I'm a marriage advocate, so I, I am obviously siding with her. I oh. agree with her Yeah. because I believe that whatever has your attention and whatever has your focus has you. Yes. So if you're spending more of your time on friends than you are on your wife, I mean, to me, that's a no brainer. That's, that's a recipe for disaster. Yes, it's um, and I see uh, I see that uh, this situation has many many layers. It's not mm -hmm. just to me. It's not mm -hmm. just the communication. There is also like um, what you said about the path. What right. path like, is yeah. on? And and some trust issues. There's some and, trash yeah. issues. Also, the idea that are you put who are you putting ahead of your wife? Are you putting like are you do you have friends? who you are actually treasuring their friendship more mm -hmm. than what you treasure, mm -hmm. like, uh, your wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And someone might say, hey, I need some, some off time from <laughs> hanging out with my wife. I, what would you tell them? I don't think there's ever any... I don't think anyone ever <laughs> needs any off time from their wife. No, I mean, hanging out with a group of guys would be different, I think. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, honestly, I, I don't think it's wrong to have friends. I don't want, I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea here. But I, if you're, you, you, the, my point is put the needs of your, your wife ahead of your own and, and definitely ahead of your friends, that's for sure. But also, um, People would say, people might say, oh, you know, yeah, the problem they have is communication. They just don't have good communication. Yes. But no, it is, it's a lot more than that. If, if he would just, you know, take a few seconds to actually just really listen to where she's coming from, then I don't think they would, they would have issues like this. The, so, mm -hmm. and then the, the third point I wanted to to bring up why communication does not work is some might say well if I'm not doing anything wrong okay then, then what's the problem yes you know then I don't I don't have to listen to this so like is it like the means justify the end or something like that yeah I mean it's basically saying you know I mean if it's okay in my eyes you know okay okay you know it and and it can be anything think of any little 
probably little, probably minor disagreement that yes. that you have with your spouse. Something that the two of you just don't quite, you, you, I mean, you, you just don't agree mm-hmm. on it. Um, I don't know. For, for well, Okay, I'll, you know what? Since we're real people with real examples, I'll, okay. I'll share one. <laughs> when we're driving, uh, Pesa likes to... Make Drive sure. very. <laughs> <laughs> he knows where I'm going with this. He, he does not necessarily see a problem with um, driving you, you very know, carefully um, and just making sure that, right? Checking the radio, you know, changing the station, playing music or... You know, if if the phone beeps, oh, what's you know, it it can't be that bad to just take a quick glance at my phone. So what I do is <laughs> I insist on. I mean, I literally sometimes I grab the phone and I say, okay, hey, if you need me to reply to a text to someone, I'll just type it for you as you're driving. Or if you want to hear a song or something from your playlist, I will do it. Like you just pay attention to the road because that's a huge pet peeve for me when someone is is a distracted driver. He is totally confident. He's like, there's no problem. He's like, we've been together for 13 years and I have hit nothing. I have never had an accident, never had a speeding ticket, never had any problem. So unlike you and I, and I have, (laughs) I have had a speeding ticket within the last few years. So that makes him like, okay, well, you know, he's right. And I'm wrong on that particular issue. So that's just an example. It's, I, we don't let it blow up into a huge <laughs> into a huge thing, but he is totally confident with what he's doing, um, you know. But I'm a little bit nervous when those things are going on. So oh, that's very ju- nervous. That's just an example to share with you that we also have these problems too. So. So what did we? How did we so, go ahead to solve that problem? So. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much I, I pretty much have taken over the phone while we're driving. As much as I as much as I think it's necessary, I usually do. But again, I think I'm probably more nervous than than I I don't think the problem is as big as as I am afraid. But that's just to to show you that, you know, couple so, every couple can have problems like that like oh well you know i'm not doing anything wrong so what's your problem why are you even bringing this up so you what know? so what do you do tell somebody who s- uses the c word is like she is very controlling what would you tell them controlling. when you said c word you scared me <laughs> controlling <laughs> she's very controlling um okay that's like a weird definition of controlling because i'm like if someone is like afraid for their safety i wouldn't call that controlling but no controlling is a good thing because doesn't Uh that show that your spouse cares about you (laughs) (laughs) that they care or that they're invested yes i know i'm okay with it i'm okay with it but i just um i'm just trying to play the devil's advocate here just to controlling yeah i'm not saying you're controlling i'm just saying like do you get what i'm saying like yes for the record for the record (coughs) if someone feels unsafe that is not controlling they have a right to voice their opinion yes if you are driving the car and they are riding with you you have every responsibility to make sure they are safe and they feel safe. Yes. That has nothing to and do that, with controlling. And that's what I try to to make sure that you are <laughs> so safe. Yes. That's why I've never gotten a now, ticket. But right? if you want to go back to that other issue of the, the husband who had a lot of friends, mm-hmm. um, particularly friends who are girls. Yes. He could probably say that. He might say, you know what? She's controlling. Yeah. But I think my response in that case would be, you know, dude, it sounds like she just cares. I To me, that doesn't sound controlling. Because, like, and also... Why, she's not why, saying don't leave the house. She's not saying that. She's just wondering, okay, why am I here at home taking care of the baby? Yes. <laughs> and then he's out, you know... With some girls. With, with yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> That, with some girls, I yeah. I mean, come on. I know, it's 2017, but co- really, come on. I I totally get it. <laughs> really, I did. I do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. And so... Um, so, <laughs> so, so, yes. So, what... Um, so... Um, mm-hmm. 
So, if you don't agree with the reason, mm -hmm. if you don't understand, and mm -hmm. if you what? So number one was if you three reasons why communication is not your problem. Yes. Number one. If I don't agree with the reason why they're complaining. Mm -hmm. Number two, if I don't understand why they're complaining. And number three, if I'm not doing anything wrong, then why are they complaining? Why are they complaining? So those are the three, <laughs> the three uh, issues. Now, another tip that we wanted to share with you guys <coughs> is the longer you stay together, you'll be able to notice when your spouse is starting to get oh upset. yeah you'll have oh the... <laughs> yeah i'm with you mm -hmm. you'll you'll be able to recognize those little signs yes and what you can do when you start noticing that you know if you if you start getting the silent treatment whatever you want to call it if you call it the cold shoulder or someone someone might just obviously you know blow start, up blow up and start yelling or storm out of the room whatever it is when you start noticing those things you can say you can start um, trying to reach a compromise. You know, you can at least offer. Yeah. Or you can uh, call for a timeout and just say, okay, you know what? Let's just chill out for a few minutes. So you're saying send somebody to timeout? What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I know it sounds like that. It sounds like, no, actually. So say, Hey, go for a timeout. So the rule is, yeah. there's a rule to it. One person can suggest, hey, let's take a break from this conversation. Yeah. Let's just calm down, let our blood pressure go down, and then we'll come back and discuss this again. So the rule is both people have to agree that it's a timeout because if one person suggests it and then walks away, that's not a timeout. That's stonewalling. Okay. Or, or it could easily be interpreted by the other person as stonewalling. So, okay, say that again. If one person just walks out, mm -hmm. that's stonewalling. Right. So if one person says, you know what, um, timeout, and then they turn around and walk away mm -hmm. while the other person is still talking, that is not a timeout. That is stonewalling. And so it it's can... not like the person is just take, giving themselves a timeout, <laughs> <laughs> sending themselves to a corner? No, it's, it's... The marriage corner? The, the marriage <laughs> corner, the naughty chair? <laughs> no, it's... Um, it would be... It could be seen as, you know what? They just totally walked away from this and they're not even willing to listen to what I'm saying. Okay. So, okay, so let's just be clear on that. If you're calling for a timeout, both people need to be like, okay, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's come back in a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes. And what if both of you don't agree on a timeout? If both of you don't agree, well, you, definitely your skills will get a lot stronger in, in solving, <laughs> in problem solving. What if both of you are like, uh, no, I'm not ready for a timeout. Let's keep this going. Let's, this, no, let's actually, keep this argument going. There, there is a science behind it. If you wait 15 minutes, mm -hmm. your um, blood pressure really will go down and you can, you can cool down. So there is yes, so there so it is it is a good thing that you can try. It's definitely helpful, mm -hmm. um, and it now, just it gives you time to clear your mind and think. Too. Now in the Bible they talk about um, don't go to bed without uh, solving your problems. Yes. So uh, how do you deal with that? Well, no, you would not. Okay, you would not take a time out for the whole night. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you would just we're just talking about like a few minutes okay. to chill out. So <laughs> I know. Yeah, let's take it to the extreme. So um no, yeah, definitely do not go to bed angry. Um that's 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 easier said than done. It, but... It's easier said than than done. And hey, and we've done that. We actually have gone to bed really mad and it sucks. I hate it because like he turns the opposite way, like in the bed, instead of like um, um, um. either facing me or just cuddling. <laughs> okay, I'm not. <laughs> or like just cu you know yeah. holding me. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. really stinks, honestly. Like like when we go to bed mad at each other, I hate it. So you should never do that you again. Sh we should. <laughs> we should both never do that again. And the reason why is not only is that just really terrible for your relationship, but also that's stress for you. I mean, that's that's going to age you and just make you feel bad overall. That's that's not good. Yeah. For either of you. Um, so if you can if you can reach um, a solution 
the sooner the better, yeah, basically. This, to make a huge, long story, story short, short, try to reach a solution. <laughs> and don't go... And don't go to time out. No, you can go to time out, but uh, don't go to bed. Um, yes, don't go to bed angry. Yes. So, folks, those are the three reasons why communication is not your problem. Number one, if I don't agree with the reason why they're upset. Number two, if I don't understand why they're upset. And number three, if I'm not doing anything wrong, then why are they upset? So... It takes more than just an exchange of words. You need to actually hear the problem. And you need to also read between the lines. Mm -hmm. And figure yes, mm -hmm. and like figure out what is going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some sometimes you'll have to do that too. Yeah. Now one thing that I wanted to close with is something really, really cool that I found on someone else's marriage um, Facebook page. Live Your Best Marriage has a Facebook page. If, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you like it so that you can get all of our awesome tips there too. But this marriage advice came from 1886. What? So I'll, I'll read it for you. It's just a short paragraph. It says, Let your love be stronger than your hate or anger. Learn the wisdom of compromise, for it is better to bend a little than to break. Believe the best rather than the worst. People have a way of living up or down to your opinion of them. Remember that true friendship is the basis for any lasting relationship. The person you choose to marry is deserving of the courtesies and kindness that you would bestow on your friends. And please hand this down to your children and your children's children. The more things change, the more they are the same. So that was written by Jane Wells in 1886. So I just thought that was a really cool little piece of advice. And I, oh, yeah. I just, I had to share it. And so if I could print that out and hang it on my refrigerator or something, and the next time we're in an argument, I'll just read it. I think that could help me chill out oh okay yeah what do you think i think i'll print it for you <laughs> print it for me yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways folks i am so glad you you decided to listen to us today and we cannot wait to bring you another message we will be back again next week thank you so much and uh again if you you can always follow us at uh, pesa shire on twitter and Whitney is at, at Whitney Shio. And uh, you can also follow our uh, podcast on iTunes and also on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. And until next time, don't forget to read the Live Your Best Marriage. Uh,